Get into the action all summer long. Listen to that. Summer. Woo. The season's over. The, the NHL season's over. The NBA season's over. But there's still lots happening in sports interaction, including we got the draft coming up. We got free agency coming up for both of those sports, plus tennis, golf, whatever it is you're into, baseball, all happening right now at sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. You can bet on those things. You can bet on free agency and draft. Exactly. And we're going to actually have to throw a bunch of props up in the Dangles Doozy section as well. Um, and I'll remember, everything's uh, you can do before games, live and play all summer long. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN or download the app to get started. It's 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Why don't we start with you, Jesse? Okay. Free agency team that you say is a winner. Now, this doesn't, this is your favorite team in free agency. They don't have to be the winner for everybody, but they but they probably are because in these situations you have to be as right as possible. Who are you giving your free agency winner tag to? So I'm gonna start with the Colorado Avalanche. Okay. They are my free agency winner. They started with the tidy piece of work of acquiring Ryan Johansson uh, for 50% retained. They did the Bowen Byram deal, which is a tidy piece of work for 3.85 for two years. Um, I I didn't hate the Jack Johnson deal at all because it's 775. Who cares? It's, you know? Whatever. Uh, the Jonathan Druin signing is for under 900 grand. It's 825. Um, I think. They did a fantastic job of filling out all of the pieces of their lineup because they have the core there to contend for a Stanley Cup. We can all agree that Colorado Avalanche are a Stanley Cup contender right now. And what they did was just supplant the rest of it with great pieces that were uh, very cheap. And now they're still in contention for the Stanley Cup. Like what, what more can you ask for out of a franchise that's going for year in, year out? Something I'm really excited to see. Uh, I know he's only making 825. I know there's a, an abundance of question marks with him. The Colorado Avalanche did not sign Jonathan Drouin to never once try him with Nathan McKinnon. He is 100% going to play games or at very least shifts mm -hmm. with Nathan McKinnon. And I hope it's magic. I really do. Yeah, I, I, I like their... And food. then you think of like the uh, the new hook deal and getting assets back from Montreal for yeah. that. 31st yeah. and 37th pick. 30, yeah, and then... Using that to get... It was Colton, wasn't and it? And then you use that to get Ross Colton from the Lightning. Who is probably better for your team now than new hook is. Mm -hmm. And then... The risk is long term. Uh, I haven't even mentioned, uh, I think, one of their more important deals, which is Miles Wood. Oh yeah, six years. Oh, yeah, six years and you two, like that? And two point five. I mean, that's not going to hurt. It, even it's if not going to hurt at all. It's two and a half million dollars when the cap goes up fifteen percent. Yeah, I guess you're right. Who cares, right? Like I, I feel that's you're right, Jesse. I think there's a high upside of that working be, just because the value on that deal in two years is mm -hmm. gonna be crazy. And th those are the contracts that you need when you're paying Nathan McKinnon twelve point six million dollars. You need the two point five guys in the middle of your lineup, and a, I think Miles Wood's a perfect player for a, that. A Miles Wood or like a David Kampf, because I'm just going on the two point five million dollar mm -hmm. long term deal thing. Those type of contracts for a player of that elk. I'm not saying these specific players because you can get injuries. They're, they're going to be $4 million in a couple of years. Yeah, they, they they don't hurt you. They don't hurt you. Like, that's not going to hurt them long term. So I, I just listed a whole bunch of stuff that Colorado did, and I don't hate any of it. That's why they're my winner for a free agency. Wow. Non-hater, Jesse Blake. Love it. All right. Steve Dangle. Who do you give your free agency winner to? And this is so far. This can change. Trades can happen. Of course. Extensions can happen. But right now. There, you know, in free agency, I think we put too much emphasis on the players a team is able to acquire and not enough emphasis on the players they're able to keep. So I look at two teams that made it to the final four, but you want one, right? Just one. I do like the job Vegas did keeping Barbashev uh, and also Aiden Hill, keeping that band together, um, only losing Riley Smith. But the team I'm going to give it to is the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, because you keep your goaltending tandem together, but cheaper, mm -hmm. which how many situations around the league are making that happen? Their goaltending trio. Yeah. Goaltending yeah. trio, thruple. thruple. Yes, uh, they were able to keep that together. And then on top of that, um, you got a nice little contract there with Faust, and you were also able to get two of the marquee guys on top of your roster that was already really good. And you're speaking about, of course, Griffin Mendel. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you were able to 
get Orlov short term, very little risk. You improve your back end that was already pretty good. And bunting makes you less pleasant to play against and add some more goals to your team. Love that. It's made even better if Tarasenko signs. Even better. That I mean, another thing that tips the scales a little bit is that they seem to be in on more. Still, they're not done. So to me, it's the Hurricanes. So um, I uh, I had a tie. I had a tie. And I think Carolina was 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 1A. So I'll go with my 1B, which is New Jersey. Um, I thought about them. I really like what they did. I think, first off... I because I'm a Toronto player or a Toronto guy, uh, I know Eric Shelgren, and he's more value to a to a depth goaltending situation than I think people give him credit he for. He's in the NHL. He can play in the NHL. And again, we talk. I, I I think we're not in the two goalie era anymore. We're in the three goalie era, and, and even four potentially. Yeah, um, and we've seen it. I also have to say that New Jersey's best work um, has been extending players. Um, And and this goes back to last summer with the Jack Hughes signing. What a fantastic contract. Even every day that contract gets better. Um, You got Luke Hughes on a a deal now too. But the thing that I think that they did the best work with was getting any value for Damon Damon Severson. Uh, You know, he'd been there a long, long time. They signed him to that eight-year deal in the sign and trade with Columbus. But I thought that that was a fantastic move. And that was early on in June. It freed up money. You got Brat. At uh, seven point eight seven five million per year, you got Halla, big time playoff performer, extended three point one five million dollars. You got Timo Meyer at eight point eight million, which is a perfect, perfect number for him. The guys they were able to keep, yeah, a hundred percent. Michael McLeod even uh, uh, one point four million. I I don't, you know, that's a good contract, and I think the you know the Shane Bowers thing, good depth. I, I love what New Jersey has done. I hate it because. Uh, you, so New Jersey is one of those teams like I wish they were my team, you know, and that I think they've done a fantastic job. The Meyer and the Brat numbers were the ones I was most interested in, in terms of, you know, the being the marquee guys and what they're good. And the fact that they're both under one's under nine, one's under eight is incredible. I'm shaking my head at them getting to Foley. Yeah. And that too. Mm-hmm. I forgot the to oh, trade. I'm just completely. That's, shaking well, and that's what freed them up not to re-sign Thomas Tatar, right? Because you've got the upgrade with to and to one more upgrade. year. And oh if, my god! And there's no risk with Toffoli if if he doesn't if it doesn't work out or if he's great. Either way, it's good. Uh, he could have a pretty bad season by his standard and be better than Tatar. So before we get to the uh, uh, the the free agency losers, I just want to say there's something that affects your pick. Okay. Uh, Vladimir Tarasenko has a new agent. Um, oh. So please uh, tell me, Dan Milstein. It's not Dan Milstein, ah! I believe. I'm just pulling it up right now. Uh, Fridge had it, so uh, give me a second. Um, but essentially, uh, his what, the, what this means as the process, uh, since J.P. Barry and Papri Son of CAA are taking over, he said what Fridge says is what this means is no deal is in place with any team and the process resets today. So there was a leaning towards uh, Carolina. Doesn't so mean they resets. won't get him, but now they reset it all. Interesting. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. Wow. I mean, those are two heavy hitters. That's huge. Probably the two biggest heavy hitters. So I think you might get paid.